I'm Amanda, the Botanical Burnett, and welcome to my channel. So hey guys, I'm in my plant room again. I'm really excited to be filming in here. Hopefully this will be a more of a recurring thing. Even though I do love my other setting, I just love this super planty behind me. Anyway, so today we're gonna be talking about this Rapidifora tetrasperma. So this plant is actually one of my most requested videos. I have been asked both on Instagram and here on YouTube to do a care guide and an update. I don't know if you guys know or not, but I actually do have a care guide on this plant. I will link that above so you guys can check that out. But this one is going to be a little bit of a care guide, but more of like my tips and tricks and what I specifically do for this plant. That one was just kind of a blanket, like this is what you should be doing and stuff like that. But this is what I do to keep this plant happy and healthy. So let's get into it. Let's talk about Raphidophora tetrasperma care. This plant is honestly pretty difficult. Once you get a hang of it, it's really easy, but really learning how to care for it and knowing what it needs. It is a pretty difficult plant. This plant is very, very prone to root rotting, which brings me into my first topic, which is watering and fertilizing. Watering this plant, like I had mentioned, is very tricky. You have to make sure that you water your plant when it needs it. I don't know if you guys know the like finger test. It's like where you measure the water to your first knuckle. You stick your finger in the soil to your first knuckle. And if it's dry, then water it. If it's still a little damp, then you can let it go for another couple days and check it again. With this plant, I make sure it's almost completely dry. I know that sounds crazy, but I really want to make sure that this plant dries out before I water it again. I'm literally coming back from trauma with this plant. When I tell you that I regrew this plant behind me five different times. I'm not even joking. So I actually have on this plant, I have two long stems and then I also have a few baby plants on the bottom that I had chopped and propagated. Basically what happened is because I root rotted this plant so many times, I took a lot of propagations. So you can do the finger test like I had mentioned before. My favorite thing is to use a moisture meter. I know that some people are now saying that moisture meters aren't super accurate, but for me, I find it to be accurate and I use them. I put the moisture meter in and if it reads anywhere above a three, I will leave it. If it's a three or below, like a three, a two or a one, I'll go ahead and water that plant. I really wanna make sure that the soil is, is dry, but not, completely dry. I mean, you don't want the plant to dry out completely, but you want to make sure that it's not sitting in wet soil. So for fertilizing with this plant, this is actually a new thing that I have been learning with this plant for a while because I don't water it that often. I probably water for me. If I could throw out a guess, I would say I probably water every 10 to 15 days, even in the spring and summer. I do have this set back away from a window. I'll get into lighting in a minute, but I do have this set back from a window so it doesn't dry out super fast. For fertilizing this plant, I am, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to learn still. I'm still learning this plant. I found that this plant does like a little bit more fertilizer. So if you're going to be watering every 10 to 15 days, I would fertilize in every watering. I found over the winter time, this plant started to get this like kind of a splotchy yellowing kind of thing on the leaves. And I couldn't figure out what was going on. Basically what that was, it was just a nutrient deficiency. So it just needed some more fertilizing because it was winter time. I wasn't really watering that much. I was probably watering this plant once a month. It wasn't getting any nutrients from right regular tap water that I water it with, it wasn't getting really any nutrients. So basically being pretty hungry. Basically what I did with that is 
I do have some that are a little bit lighter yellow leaves, but I made sure that I trimmed the top of that. I did wind up propagating that stem and it's actually now planted in the plant. I basically had to chop it and I chopped it to about halfway where it is now. And that was back in, I think December. I really didn't want to, but because the leaves were starting to grow a little bit wonky and they were yellowy and splotchy. I just didn't know what was going on. Like I said, I found that it was a nutrient deficiency, but at the time I thought it could have been mosaic disease or anything like that. So I kind of freaked out. Checking this plant to make sure that it needs water is very important when it comes to care for it. Honestly, I'm going to say that for every Rapidophora, every Rapidophora that I have, even my dragon tail needs a good amount of water, but also making sure that it's almost completely dry. I have root rotted my other Rapidophora. Same thing that happened with this one, it happened with that one too. So it's just, those plants are just very sensitive to root rot. It's just what it is. So I'm terrified to water this plant. I really am like, I'll admit it. Like I'm scared to water it. Every time I water it, I'm like giving it the minimal amount of water it needs. And so far it seems to be doing okay. I basically water until the, I basically water until the water just slowly starts to drip out. So just kind of making sure that it's thoroughly saturated and it drains a little bit, but I don't want like, it will really scare me if it like starts to pour out. So lighting for these plants. These plants will actually be okay in a lot of different types of lighting. Again, I'll never recommend a low light for this plant, but any bright, bright light that's not direct, you don't want the sunlight rays to actually hit them. These plants will actually burn if you get any like direct sun hitting the leaves. Put it in a place where it's going to get filtered light. So if you guys haven't seen my environment video of things you should know to be a plant parent, I'll link that up here as well. So you guys can check that out. I kind of go in depth on what different types of lighting is and kind of give you a little bit of a guide on lighting so you guys can check that out if you'd like to see sometimes with medium bright light it kind of gets confusing and people are like what the heck does that mean what is medium light even like what is that even um so i tried to kind of break it down as best as i could in that video i would always suggest with medium bright light just a place where your plant can kind of see out the window. You get a good amount of bright light in the room, or if it's in front of the window, just make sure that there's a sheer curtain behind it. I actually used to have this plant when I first got it back in, I think it was like March in 2021. I got this plant and I wound up having it next to the window, like next to my Southeast window. And it grew so tall over there, but it wound up getting so burned and the leaves just looked bad. So I did wind up chopping that. And I think that's the second stem that you see because when I first bought this plant, it was just one stem and it has since grown a second stem that I had to chop to kind of make it even. I mean, lighting is super easy for this plant. Really a lot of different lightings is okay. Minus you don't want to do low light and you don't want to do super high light, but like kind of anywhere in between that will work out fine. This plant is not near a window. So I have a Northeast window here and I have a Southeast window right in front of me. And then the grow lights are right here. So it gets like bright light from all of the windows and probably getting something from the grow lights, but it's not in any certain direct sun. It never gets any direct sun rays hitting it maybe a little bit in the morning with this northeast window it doesn't get any like sun rays like hitting it directly i actually was worried when i moved this over here because it was in my window and it was doing really well it grew really great over there but i was worried because i was like this might be too low light and this plant didn't grow super well in the winter could also be the fact that I didn't fertilize correctly. Since spring is here, this plant has been nonstop growing and I'm kind of a little, a little nervous to see how tall it gets because it's almost at the top of my door frame in my plant room. So after that, I mean, I have probably another, I don't know, probably like five feet that it could grow up 
until it hits my ceiling because I have slanted ceilings um, here in my plant room. So we'll see. We'll see how tall that gets. A little, little nervous that it's gonna get too tall for that spot. Pest wise, I haven't had any pests on this plant. I, I'm like nuts with systemic, putting systemic on that every six months. Make sure that doesn't get any pests. I make sure that I wipe down the leaves, really wanna make sure that the leaves are wiped down, the foliage is nice and shiny. I always make sure that like there's no dust or anything left on the leaves, especially since it is a little bit further back from the window. I want it to be able to absorb as much light as it can. So I try to make that as easy for the plant as possible. Soil and watering are probably the two most important things. So let's talk about soil. For every Rapidophora that I get in my collection is going to get this soil mixture. It is 25% Fox Farm Ocean Forest soil or whatever potting soil you want to use. 25% perlite and 50% bark or the orchid mix that I like to use. I'll link all this below so you guys can check out my little potting mix. I found that these plants do really well in a really loose barky soil. I actually do the same formula pretty similar in my monsteras and my anthariums. So any of those plants get that kind of really chunky, barky soil. I want to be able to water this plant more than water it less, if that makes sense. So if you know that you're going to need to be watering this plant more often, then I would put it in a really loose soil. Even with the super chunky soil that I have in my plant, I still typically do need to water, like I said, every 10 to 15 days. But I think that the soil mixture really was the tipping point of me being able to care for this plant so successfully. Once I got the soil mixture down for this plant, it has been easy breezy. Like it has literally been so easy to care for this plant ever since I changed it into that soil. So I'll say watering is a big issue and soil is a very big issue with these plants. Do not put your Rapidophoras in this really high water absorbing soil. I had it strictly before, um, when I bought it a couple years ago, I had it in Fox Farm Ocean Forest soil with maybe a little extra perlite and that's it. And it just kept rotting and rotting and rotting. Like I said, I have regrown this plant five separate times. In those five times, I've learned things here and there about care wise with this plant. It's been a struggle. I mean, it's, it really has. Now I do get questions a lot about the foliage size. People are asking, well, my Rapidophora is getting really small leaves. How can I fix that? There's a couple things that could be going on with that with the smaller leaves. One could be that the plant is not getting enough light. Two, it could be that the plant is just not mature and it just needs to kind of mature. Or three, you wanna make sure that you put your plant on a moss pole. For me, I just kind of place it on the wall. So I have these hooks back here that I place the plant I kind of like hook the plant to the wall. That actually helps stabilize the plant. And I have noticed that a lot of the aerial roots will kind of cling to the wall, which is kind of funny, <laughs> but it just gives that plant some stability. Any of those clips I'll have linked in my Amazon shop and also below in the description. So you guys can check that out if you'd like to get those same clips. They really do work well. I will say be careful with like super painted walls like if you have a lot of layers of paint because i have noticed on some of the walls like i have another plant this wall has been fine like if i remove the tape it's been fine but i have another wall for some reason when i remove those it kind of took the paint with it they're not supposed to do that but i just wanted to give you guys a fair warning just in case that happens you can replace the sticky backs on it it's kind of a pain in the butt but you could replace that as well with like better like sticky backs. That is something that is very important for Raptophoras. I have my 
dragon tail that doesn't actually have any kind of support and it winds up getting a lot of like long runners basically kind of reaching for support i am kind of weird about it and i don't really like to i'm not gonna attach that to the wall so i'll just keep cutting them and propagating them and placing them back i just want more of a bushier plant than a tall plant i actually tried to do an experiment to get it to trail and it's kind of failing horribly but you know we gotta experiment with our plants sometimes but bigger leaves do come with maturity. So if you have the plant stabilized on the wall, in time, it will get more mature. You can see here that these leaves down here are a little bit smaller. And as it goes up, these leaves up here are a lot bigger. Again, once the plant gets more mature, it gets a little bit more of a stabilization and everything like that, it will produce bigger and even more fenestrated leaves isn't going to be like a full care guide but I will go into propagation just because I have had a really good success with propagation with these plants um, no really tips or tricks with that I only have ever propagated these plants in water and it does completely fine like your standard propagation you find the node and put the plant in the water and within a couple of weeks you'll start to see roots forming so it's honestly really easy with that i just wanted to throw that in as well but these plants are just so they're so complicated but once you get to in a rhythm once you get like a not a routine but like once you get to know the plant really it will be one of your easiest plants this plant is pretty easy for me i don't need to water it super often and I don't really need to bother with it other than, you know, re maybe getting a couple more of the tabs to kind of get it secured to the wall, which I probably need to get some more soon. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, it's honestly like such an easy plant once you get a hang of it, but I wish there was somebody out there like me that was just like, hey, these plants are really prone to root rot. You're gonna root rot this plant several times. And I could not find anything that anybody was saying about these plants. So here I am <laughs> letting you guys know. Some ways you can actually find out that the plant is root rotted. I think I go into it in my uh, plant care actual guide, but some ways you can find out is the leaves might start to look thirsty. So a lot of times with this plant, I have found that the leaves are actually pretty plump when they don't need to be watered. They'll, they're still thinner leaves, but they have a little bit of pillowiness to them where a plant that might be thirsty or root rotted will have a veiny kind of look dried out like look to the leaf. Make sure you check the soil before you water the plant. That was my mistake. When I would see the leaves, I'd be like, oh, it looks really thirsty. And I try to water it and it's it's root rotted. It doesn't need water. So it's basically like, I don't need this water. <laughs> I'm literally drowning. Just make sure you check the soil. Always check the soil with really any of your plants, but especially with this plant because it will save you a headache in the long run. I've had people send me pictures. I've had people ask me like, why is my Raphaphora looking like dry all the time? And that is probably why it is probably root rot. It's a, it's not a fun thing. Um, I also have a root rot video, how I kind of combated root rot. I'll link that above and below. So you guys can check those out as well. Um, I have a lot of resources for these plants. It's really like kind of like basic plant care, except for just making sure your soils are good and making sure your watering is not super frequent. But that's it for today. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or if you have this plant and you're like, I don't know what's going on with it. Let me know because I probably, I probably had to deal with it too. And yeah. That's it for today. I hope you guys all have a great day and stay botanical.